Part 1 You will now hear a conversation between a man and a girl. The interaction is related to booking a room as paying guests. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Hi, good morning. My name is Peter. How may I help you? Hi, my name is Lisa. I've come to know that you hire out rooms as paying guests to overseas students. Yes, we do. We have various sized accommodation. What are you looking for? I'm looking for a room which is neither too big nor too small, and we need a room that can accommodate two people with a small balcony and a garden. Along with this, it should be near to the college campus. Well, we have two rooms to adjust two to three people comfortably with attached washrooms and a small balcony on the first floor. A small garden is attached with the room on the ground floor. Hmm. It seems as if it might be suitable. It is very clean and well maintained. I tried various places. Either they are far from my college or their maintenance is not so good. OK, now what is the rent? It's $300 per week or $1,000 per month. Whatever you like. We do all the legal formalities first to avoid any consequences later. Mmm, it's a little expensive. Can it be $250 per week? We would like to pay weekly. It will be convenient for me and my friend. OK. Can you tell me when you are thinking to rent it from? Would you like to hire it from this week or next week? Whatever you decide, you have to pay security of $500 to book it. OK, that's fine. I can pay it now and we'll rent it from this Monday. OK. We don't allow smoking in the premises. We only allow playing soft music at low volume. That's OK. I think what I and my friend need is all here. I'm happy to go ahead. Now look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen to the second half of the recording and answer questions 6 to 10. Can you give me your college identity information? Yes, sure. Then you'll have to fill in the tenant register form. What's your college ID number? It's written on my college ID card. Mm, it's 592-55-18099. Fine. And which department? It's Department of Fine Arts, B Block. OK, so that's B Block, Fine Arts Department? Yes, that's right. And contact number? My landline is 553297 with the code. But I'll give you my mobile number, which is 0999-888-1790. OK, 0999-888-1790. Anything else? I need the same information for your roommate also. OK. Her ID number is 925-9696-970. And she is from Law Department, A Block. Her contact number is 0889970259. One last thing, your home country. Oh, I belong to Korea and she's from France. Oh, that's great. My father belonged to Korea and my aunts are living in France. Oh, one last thing. I forgot to write your names. My name is Lisa Lincoln and she is Susan John. Is it L-I-S-A-L-I-N-C-O-N-E and S-U-Z-Z-A-N-E-J-O-H-N? That's right. Anything else? No, nothing. Here is your receipt of the cash that you have deposited as a security. Thank you. Meet you on Sunday evening, the day we're planning to shift. You are most welcome.
That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You are going to hear about a city plan shared by a councillor with the citizens. First look at questions 11 to 13. Now listen to the recording and answer questions 11 to 13. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Councillor Rosie Michael and welcome to the yearly meeting about the development of the city. The meeting is specially related to the site in the city centre which has been lying unused for more than a decade. There has been pressure on the council to use the land to build a shopping mall. However, we have been encouraged by people to use the land for the welfare of people. As it is a central place of the city, so it should be used for the benefit of the community. And now I have the pleasure to announce that the project which has got approval is a sports centre, a park and a small library. I'm also pleased to announce that many local organizations have come forward to sponsor the projects which will help the government to complete it in a shorter span of time. A more detailed plan is available on the Council's official website. In the meantime, I'd like to show you the plan on the screen. Now look at questions 14 to 20. As the talk continue, answer questions 14 to 20. Starting from here, we can have a look at the Arena Street, where the main entrance to the sports centre is there. On the left side of the entrance, in the bottom left, the block is for a big hall for indoor games, open area for two football pitches and two for cricket, four tennis and volleyball courts. On the other side of the entrance, there will be another hall with the capacity to accommodate 500 people at a time. This will be an auditorium to conduct workshops and local functions. There will be another entrance on the top right which leads into English Street. Here in the centre of the area, we will have a big light fountain which will be connected with part north, south, east and west to the different areas of the sports centre. In the right top corner, just by the English Street entrance, there will be a small library. Of course, an educational area where elders can enjoy reading and mothers can enhance reading skills of their children. By the side of the library, a huge parking space is also planned. Now, in the top left corner, a park is planned which comprises of a walled, however, garden with walkways, seats and lots of shady areas for summer. Next to this, there will be a cactus and a botanical garden. In the same corner, there will be swings and play area for children. More trees will be planted here to maintain the greenery and attractiveness of the place. And finally, in the bottom right-hand corner, near to the auditorium, will be a cafe opening onto English Street. And now, 
If anyone would like to ask any questions, I and some other government officials would be happy to oblige. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear conversations between a lecturer and a student. Both of them are talking about the taste of music among students. Now look at questions 21 to 24. Now listen to the conversation and answer questions 21 to 24. Peter, let's look at the survey you did yesterday related to the taste of music. So, where did you go? Dr. Goldstein, I went to the music departments of our university and surveyed both type of students who studied vocal or instrumental music. So, what did you find? Well, I found people with diverse tastes. Some like folk, traditional, and even rock, jazz also. For playing instruments, also people like to play according to their liking. Hmm, I'm not surprised. What were the favourites specifically? Well, to start with, playing instruments, George loves drums. He told me he's been playing drums since his childhood. At that time, he used to play with his schoolmates, and now he plays drums with his friends on weekends, in hotels or restaurants. They have their own band. Hmm, good, Peter. Do you also play an instrument? What do you like to play? I saw you playing at the last annual function of your college. There, I was the chief guest for the function. My favourite is the guitar. However, I don't play frequently. But if there is an opportunity, I never miss the chance. I started playing it in college. Hmm. Yes, please. Mary likes to play violin. She's a violinist. Emmy likes flute and it's her favourite. Both are freshers. Hmm. What about vocal music? I contacted many students, but most of them like to sing either folk or some traditional songs in their own language. Most of the girls in the department are from Spain, so they sing songs in Spanish, and the boys are from India, and obviously they sing their Bollywood-style songs. Hmm. How interesting. Some other students like to listen to opera and love to go see a performance. They say they like to be spectators rather than performing. Thank you, Peter. It's amazing to know about the tastes of different students learning music in our university. I'll definitely call you at the time of performance. Now I want to switch discussion with a professor of Department of Music from another university. The discussion is mainly on the advantages and physiological effects of music. Now look at questions 25 to 30. As the talk continues, answer questions 25 to 30. For the purpose of this discussion, I'm going to divide this talk into two parts. One is advantages and the other is physiological effects of music. Under advantages, we'll talk about music as a leisure activity and music as a career. As a physiological effect, music stimulates and calms us. In front of me is sitting Dr. Roger from Music Department of Alexandria University. Let me ask a question. 
How is music perceived in your department? Well, students study music more for career. Hardly any people study for leisure. The students opt for either their own musical brands or groups and start organizing live concerts, or some others become music teachers, mentors in schools, or even lectures in colleges and university. Right. So you mean to say diversified options are open to people who study music? Now, what do you say about its physiological aspect? It's great. It seems that music stimulates blood circulation, and the fast music even increases the heartbeat, blood pressure rises, and blood flows quickly into the body. This is the result of exciting music, which is beneficial. Music has another side. <laughs> In case of soothing music, the body and mind feels relaxed, and there is a feeling of calmness. It helps in getting relaxed, refreshed, and rejuvenated. So people enjoy music in their own way. It's really nice to know a lot from you about music and its utility. I think this will help not only the gentle people, but also the students studying music. Thank you for giving time. Thank you from my side also. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You will hear an extract from a talk given by a production manager on the process of paper making in a factory. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions. Paper making is the process of making paper, a substance which is used universally today for writing and packaging. In paper making, a dilute suspension of fibers in water is drained through a screen so that a mat of randomly interwoven fibers is laid down. Water is removed from this mat of fibers by pressing and drying to make paper. Since the invention of the Ford Drenier machine in the 19th century, most paper has been made from wood pulp because of cost. But other fiber sources such as cotton and textiles are used for high quality papers. One common measure of a paper's quality is its non-wood pulp content. Example, 25% cotton, 50% rag, etc. Previously, paper was made up of rags and hemp as well as other materials. Paper making, regardless of the scale on which it is done, involves making a dilute suspension of fibers in water and allowing this suspension to drain through a screen so that a mat of randomly interwoven fibers is laid down. Water is then removed from this mat of fibers using a press. The method of manual paper making has changed very little over time despite advances in technologies. The process of manufacturing handmade paper can be generalized into five steps. 1. Separating the useful fiber from the rest of raw material, example cellulose from wood, cotton, etc. 2. Beating down the fiber into pulp. 3. Adjusting the color, mechanical, chemical, biological and other properties of the paper by adding special chemical premixes. 4. Screening the resulting solution. 5. Pressing and drying to get the actual paper. Screening the fiber involves using a mesh made from non-corroding and inert material such as aluminium which is stretched in a wooden frame similar to that of a window. 
The size of the paper is governed by the size of the frame. This tool is then completely submerged in the solution vertically and drawn out horizontally to ensure a uniform coating of the wire mesh. Excess water is then removed and the wet matter fiber is laid on top of a damp cloth. The process is repeated for the required number of sheets. This stack of wet mats is then pressed in a hydraulic press very gently to ensure the fiber does not squeeze while drying. Sometimes the individual sheet is rolled to flatten, harden and refine the surface finally. The paper is then cut to the desired shape or the standard shape A4, letter, legal, etc. and packed. The wooden frame is called a decal. The decal leaves the edges of the paper slightly regular and wavy called decal edges, one of the indications that the paper was made by hand. Decalaged paper is occasionally mechanically imitated today to create the impression of old-fashioned luxury. The impressions in paper caused by the wires in the screen that run sideways are called laid lines and the impressions made usually from top to bottom by the wires holding the sideways wires together are called chain lines. Watermarks are created by weaving a design into the wires in the mold. This is essentially true of oriental made of other substances, such as bamboo. Handmade paper generally folds and tears more evenly along the laid lines. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.